the data to one today we are going to discuss another topic under module one unit two for the subject ce2221 so in this lecture we are going to discuss motion graphs under uniform rectilinear motion so graphs are basically commonly used in the study of motion this would now give us much information and sometimes a better understanding of the concepts of motion. So when we say concepts of motion, this would now include the displacement or the position of our particle. We also have the speed or the velocity and the acceleration of the particle. So from these graphs, we'll now be able to assume or determine either or any of the concepts of motion. So as we have discussed, the concepts of motion would always be dependent of time. Therefore, our motion graphs or motion curves of the three basic concepts will always be defined versus the time. That is now the distance versus time graph, velocity versus time, and the acceleration versus time graph. So for our First, motion graph, which is the distance position or position versus time graph. This now basically defines the slope, which is equal to the velocity. So for, a, for the xt graph, its slope will always be equal to the velocity of the particle. So in equation, we know that the velocity is equal to the change in your position divided by the change in the time. So graphically, if we have here our position time graph. So the slope now, which is tangent to our curve, will be defined by our change in S. So, S1, S2, and with respect to time 1 and time 2. So, in slope, that will always be equal to y over x. So, that is ds over dt, which is delta s over delta t. Okay? So, next, we have velocity versus time graph. So, the slope of the vt would now be equal to the acceleration of the particle. So in equation, we write the acceleration as the change in V divided by the change in time. So graphically, we could now uh, determine our acceleration through the slope of the graph. So we have here your Vt. This is our curve. So the slope of the curve will now be defined by its change in time, T1, T2, with respect to its, or the velocity and velocity 1 and velocity 2. So we have now your slope, which is equal to y over x or that is dv over dt which is the same as this equation so aside from the slope of motion for curves that we use to identify or solve for our velocity and acceleration the distance or the position and the velocity may now be determined through the areas under the curves or under our graphs. So let's say, given your ST, VT, and AT curves, the net displacement now from T1 to T2 would correspond to the area under our speed time curve. So mathematically, we can write this as the integral of ds from s1 to s2 is equal to the integral of v dt from t1 to 
E2. Or this can also be written as delta S or S2 minus S1 is now equal to the area under your VT curve. And the net velocity from time 1 to time 2 would correspond to the area under our acceleration time curve. So from the integration of your speed and your acceleration vt, we could now write that the change in the velocity is equal to your area under your at curve. So graphically, we consider this graph. So we have here your position time curve. So as we have said, the slope of the ST curve will be defined as our DS over DT. So if I will now take this point, so at this point, I can now determine my speed and my Uh, so this is my speed and my velocity. Okay, so from here, this position now, so this, the thickness at this t will simply be our change in time, and this is our v. Okay, so basically, so yung area na to, v times dt will simply be equal to our S. Okay? So, yung S1 minus S2 ninyo is the V times DT. And then, same, P times DT will now be equal to our velocity v1 and v2 or the change in v1 and v2 okay since graphs or the motion graphs would be able to give us the values of our motion through the slope let us understand or define what is a slope so this is the definition of slope from math would simply be the ratio of our y values so it's x values and for our motion graph the slope now of the curve will be the slope of the tangent so given now our curve this line now will be the slope Tangent. So next, for our slope, we have a zero slope, where in it means it is a horizontal line. So for our velocity, if the slope of our xt curve is horizontal, then the velocity now will mean that it is zero. Okay? So likewise, for our VT curve, if the slope is horizontal, it means that the acceleration is equivalent to zero. So we also have what we call a uniform slope, where in the slope now will be a straight line. So we have a uniform slope which is positive when it is going up and a negative slope when it is going downwards. Okay. And also we have a varying slope which will show a curved line. So going up will mean a positive increasing and a curve going down 
is in negative decreasing. We also have another curve which is curving downwards but it will now be open or the opening will be facing down. It means it is negatively increasing and we also have a positively decreasing slope which will look like this one. So it's going up but your curve now is facing down. So we also said that our motion could also be defined or determined through the area under the curve. So the area lying between the curve and your horizontal reference and bounded on the left and the right by vertical ordinates will be our area. So example of an area from your curves will be a rectangular area. So that will simply be T1, T2, and then the value of your motion. So it's either your acceleration or your velocity. Then we also have a triangular area where in the slope now is 1 degree. So triangular is 1 half B times the time. 1 half times our acceleration or velocity. And then we also have a spandrel we're in at the start is a zero slope. So this is a two degree curve. So the area now can be computed simply as one third times HT if it's a two degree curve. Or it can also be computed as one divided by one plus N times H times T, where in N is the degree of curve. So if your spandrel is a three degree curve, then the equation will become now 1 over 4HT. And lastly, we also have a curve that is facing downwards. So it's part of span. So it's part of the spandrel. So for your rectangular area, minus the spandrel, kaya siya naging 2 thirds HT. Okay? So, yung spandrel natin yung dito sa taas. Okay? So, if it's opening up like this, the area now will be 1 third HT. If it's opening downwards, then it will be 2 thirds HT. You understand now how to solve using motion graphs or motion curves. Let's solve an example. So, a particle moves in a straight line with the velocity shown in the figure, knowing that x is equal to negative 540 meters at t equal to 0. So in this problem, we are to construct the at and the xt curves for a range of time 0 to 50 seconds. And b, determine the maximum value the position coordinate of the particle and C to determine the value of time or values of time for which the particle is at a position of x equal to 100 meters. So we are given here a vt curve. So from this curve we'll be able to get now our Position. Likewise, we will be able to get our acceleration. So for our solution, for the first part, draw the AT curve. And the AT curve now is simply equal to the slope of our VT curve. So given this curve, so, for time 0 to 10, the slope is 
horizontal meaning it's constantly so therefore a now is equal to zero and then we have from 10 to 26 the slope now will be given by the velocity or the change in your velocity and your change in time. So that will now be equal to negative 20 minus 60 divided by 26 minus 10. Or our acceleration now is equal to negative 5 meters per second squared. And then next we have the slope for the time 26 to 41 seconds so it is again a horizontal line so meaning from this time the velocity is constant so our acceleration is equal to zero and then for the time 41 to 46 seconds so this will now be equivalent to negative 5 minus negative 20 divided by 46 minus 41 or the acceleration now is positive 3 meters per second squared. And then for the time 46 up to our range is until 50. So until 50 is a horizontal line so it's a constant value so the acceleration is also equal to zero okay so for our at curve since we have able now to solve for the value so for the acceleration for each range of time we can now draw our curve or our graph so the acceleration will be our y-axis and the time will be our horizontal axis so for a time 0 to 10 seconds we have 0 acceleration so from 0 to 10 then next we have from 10 to 26 seconds it is negative 5 meters and then we have for 26 to 41 seconds that's a zero again then we have 41 to 46 seconds is positive three meters per second squared so from 46 onwards or until 50 that is now equal to an acceleration of zero this will now be our acceleration time graph so next we draw our xt curve so for the xt curve the change in position between our times one and two will simply be equal to the area of the vt's slope or one and two which will now give us the net displacement so therefore by equation your change in position or the displacement now is simply equal to the area under our VT curve from a range of time 1 to 2. Or since we want to solve now for the position at a certain time, at the second time, we can also rewrite this as x1 plus area under the V squared or VT. So from the problem, we are given that a time equal to zero, our position is at negative 540 meters. Okay, so given now this graph, our graph, we just simply compute for the areas of our VT curve. So we have at time 10 seconds, extend now x at 10 is equal to negative 
540. So, x1 plus our area under the curve from 0 to 10. This is the area and that will now be equivalent to gano kahaba ito? 0 to 10 times gano kataas? 60. So, 60 times 10. So, x10 now will give us a value of 60 meters. Next, so from 10, we move to this point. This will now be our velocity at 0. And this is achieved at a time t. So by similar triangles, we'll now be able to compute for our time. So we'll consider this larger triangle. And the triangle made by 10 and the velocity equal to 0. So we'll have 60 minus 0 divided by 10 minus t is equal now to 60 plus 20 divided by 10 minus 26. Okay, so this is 60 minus negative 20 by a plus. So for t now, solving for t, we'll now be able to arrive at a value of 22 seconds. So therefore, xv at 0 will be equivalent to 60 plus this area that is 1 half 22 minus 10 times 60 which is now equal to 420 meters. Okay. So next, we solve now from 22 seconds to 26 seconds, x at 26 is equal to x1 for 20 plus this shaded area. So that is now equal to 1 half times 4 minus 20. So back it 4, that's 26 minus 22. And then your height is from 0 to negative 20. So, x26 will give us a value of 30, uh, 380 meters. And then, for a time from 26 to 41 seconds, our x41 now is equal to 380 plus this area so that is now equal to 41 minus 26, that's 15 times negative 20. So x41 is now equal to 80 meters. And then we have at time 46. So we solve that as x46 is equal to x41 which is 80 plus the shaded portion. So hindi kasama yun nandun sa taas ha. So that is now equal to 1 half times 5 times negative 20 minus 5. So 5 kasi 46 minus 41. So 4, 8, 46, that is now equal to 100 or that 17.5 meters. So in computing for the height, always include also your sign conventions. Okay, pa. Kasi pag hindi nyo sinama yung sign conventions, mag-iiba yung value name. And then lastly, we have at x or at time until 50 seconds. So that will now be x of 50 is equal to x46, 17.5 plus this area. Which is now 46 minus 50 is 4 times negative 5. So our value now is equal to negative 2.5 meters. So after solving now the values of the position for the respective time, we can now draw our xt curve or your st graph. So we have now from Time equal to 0, 
we have 540 meters as our displacement or our position. So next point is at 10 seconds, so which is 60 meters. Then we have 22 seconds at 420 meters. 26 seconds is at 380. We have 41 seconds at 80 meters. And we have here at 46 seconds is 17.5. Then we have at 50 seconds, we have 22 point, negative 2.5 meters. So from the graph, we'll now be able to identify our maximum displacement, the maximum position. Positive is equal now to 420 meters. Okay. So next, we have letter C to now determine the value of the time for which the particle is at x equal to 100 meters. So we now go back to our VT diagram and your ST diagram of the curves. So from our ST diagram, so we have here our displacements. So at displacement 100, it will now be found at these points. There are two times where in the particle is at 100 meters. So for the first time, it, it will be at 100 meters. It is found along this line. So meaning, this is our velocity at time T1. Okay, and then we have now for our time, we know that our displacement, the change in position is equal to the area of our VT diagram and that 100 meters will be found at a time between 10 seconds and 22 seconds. So from here, we can now write our equation is from 10 seconds that is now equal to displacement is 100 then this one is 420 so 420 minus 100 is equal now to the area between e1 and t2 equal now to one half times 22 minus t1 times v1 so we have two unknowns only one equation so we call this equation one so we get our second equation from similar triangles so we have the shaded area and this triangle okay. so next We'll have now V minus 0 divided by T1 minus 22 is equal now to 60 minus 0 divided by 10 minus 22. And then we can simplify this. V1 now is equal to T1 minus 22 times negative 5. So that's 60 divided by 10 minus 22. Or V1 now is equal to 100 times minus 5. So this value of V1 now will be substituted to equation 1. When we do that, we'll arrive at 320 is equal to 1 half 22 minus T1 times 110 minus 5. So with that, we can now solve for T1. From here, we have a quadratic equation. So by quadratic formula, we'll now be able to solve for T1 at 33.313 seconds. And T2 is equal to 10.686 seconds. So take note that for T1, it is found between 10 seconds and 22 seconds. So for these values, two values, what will govern is 
10.686. So, this is the value for P1. Okay? So, next we have for the second time that it is at 100 meters, it will now be found at time P2, which is found between 26 and 41 <coughs> seconds. Okay? So, from here, let's just enlarge the triangle between 380 and 80. So, 380, 80. So, it is a triangle. Okay? So, we have 380, 80. The time now is 26 to 41 seconds. And at any point between them or at a certain point between the two, we have now our T2 with a displacement of 100 meters. Okay? So from here, we can now apply our similar triangles or ratio and proportion. So we have 380, 26, 100 is the T2 is now equal to 380, 26, 80, and 41. So simplifying, we can now solve for T2, which is equal to 40 seconds. So basically, the times now at which the particle is at a position 100 meters will be at first at 10.686 and at 40 seconds. And that's it for motion curves. Thank you for listening. So for your references, you can check these websites.